Meron na ba kayong uh, nagawa na isang bagay na foolish and yet at that moment it just felt right? Meron na ba nangyari sa buhay niyong ganyan? Have you ever made a decision na uh, seems to go against logic? However, yung andun kayo sa sitwasyon, parang everything's bringing you to that point. Meron na bang ganon? Parang bang you felt, uh, is this God? Parang God, will siya ni God. Parang everything's falling into place towards that direction. And then have you acted on that passion? Kasi everything seems to be supporting it. Even the world is telling you tama yung ginagawa mo. Like for example, uh, I always say the reason why I wrote some of my books is because I'd like to correct what the world has been saying. In fact, today, and dami-daming tao sa internet that would say, oh, I found the secret to success. Mm-hmm. Na hindi mo kailangan magtrabaho. Yeah. So, that's, 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 that's what the world has been saying. And marami ang natatrap dyan. Like for example, recently I wrote about, uh, sabi, in, in a post, sabi ko, stop trying to be someone else. Kasi nga, meron ako nakilala, pumunta sa Cagayan, 24 years old, he resigned from his job when he was 22. He became, he wanted to be a stock trader, he wanted to be a public speaker. Sabi ko, paano, man, paano ka naman nakagawa ng ganyang desisyon? Kasi sabi niya, feeling ko talaga yung pinapagawa ni God because idol ko si Randall Chongson, si Jason Lo, si Marvin Germo, e, yun yun sila. So he, he left his job. Okay, he left his job only because that's the word that was the word uh, what that that was what the world was telling him to do. And of course others, di ba? You know to lessen the risk ng baka magkamali ka, ginawa mo, you weigh the pros and cons, di ba? Ganun kay, di ba? You weigh the pros and cons, you consulted people you respect para hindi masyadong risky. So finally, you acted on you acted on on on, on that feeling, on that emotion. Tapos bumalpak lahat. Nangyari na ba sa inyo yun? Have you ever experienced certain things like that? Ako naniniwala ako, this has happened to you. Siguro nakalimutan na lang nyo. We have all made decisions, wrong decisions that we've regretted. Diba? Ang tanong ko lang, when you took the risk and made the decision, was it worth it? Nung napahama ka, nung napahama ka na, you went to God and asked, Lord, ba't mo inalaw? Bakit mo ako hindi pinigilan? Diba? Minsan, we do something and we ask God, bakit hindi mo ko pinigilan? Why did you allow the temptation? Pero ang tanong ko nga, let me go back to my question, was the risk worth the pain that you experienced after? Lahat tayo nagkamali na. And there are things we regret today that we are even suffering through. Yun, let me just explain why I, I'm sharing this. Because kaya ko ito natanong, because na disturb ako nung rinibuke ni Nathan si David after his sin against Uriah and Bathsheba. If you don't mind, can you go to your Bibles, go to 2 Samuel, babasahin ko yung incident na yan. Okay? 2 Samuel chapter 12. We'll be reading verses 7 to 12. Uh, gumawa na ng kasalanan si David, napatay niya na si Uriah, nabantis niya na si Bathsheba, to look at verse 7, sabi, Nathan then said to David, You are the man. Diba he was talking about a man who who was rich, who took the the, the ship of this poor fellow, yun ang pinamigay. Diba? Nagaling si David, sabi niya, that's very unfair. And so Nathan said, You are the man. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Is it I who anointed you king over Israel? Uh, it is I who anointed you king over Israel. And it is I who delivered you from the hand of Saul. I also gave your master's house and your master's wife into your care. I gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have added to you many more things like this. Why have you despised the word of the Lord by doing evil in his sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and had taken and have taken his wife to be your wife and have killed him with the sword of the sons of Ammon. Now therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against you 
from your own household. I will even take your wives before your eyes and give them to your companion, and he will lie down with your wives in broad daylight. Indeed, you did it in secret, but I will do this thing before all Israel and under the sun. Did this happen? Did all this curse happen? Nangyari ito lahat, di ba? In fact, ang anak niya mismo ang nakipagtalik sa mga asawa niya. Grabe, di ba? While reading this, nasyak ako and na-disturb ako. Na-disturb ako kasi sabi ko sa sarili ko, how can a sin that lasted for a moment have a consequence that would haunt David throughout his lifetime? Grabe, no? Kung, isip, kung bilangin mo siguro yung araw ng pag-sin niya, siguro one month lang yon, Kasi pinatawag niya si Uriah tapos pinapatay niya kagad eh. Pero the consequence lasted for a lifetime. You know, I remembered I had a conversation with my friend si Arnold Humalon. You know, at that time we were sharing our personal struggles. And as we were talking about our personal struggles, sabi niya, alam mo dong, Minsan, naisip ko, sarap siguro magpakatotoo, no? <laughs> diba? Alam mo ako, I saw Arnold as a very good man. Pero nung sinabi niya na ang sarap magpakatotoo, so naisip ko, so hindi pala totoo yung nakikita ko. Kasi gusto niya, hindi pala siya nagpapakatotoo, eh. Meaning, if he did not control himself, ibang tao ang makikilala ko. So habang nagpapakabait siya, narealize ko, fake pala siya. <laughs> the fake kasi sabi niya, gusto hindi, hindi pa ito to eh. But anyway, like, let me go back to that later. So let me go back dun sa tanong ko, have you ever done something na alam mong mali, ginawa mo, pero it seems good during the time? Ano ang tanong ko, was it worth it? Or is, still, is it still hunting you today? You know, minsan feeling natin, oy mali ko, tapos na yan. Okay, tapos na yan. Nabayaran ko na yan. When I was reading the Bible, I realized that may kasalanan, mayroon mga kasalanan na ang tagal-tagal ng consequence na feeling mo hindi na siya kasama kasi kakabit pa pala siya. What do I mean? When I was thinking about this, I remembered King Saul. Naalala niyo yung mga kasalanan niya? Ano yung mga kasalanan niya? Di ba? He took the responsibility of Samuel, sacrifice, did the blood sacrifice. Was that a major sin? Para sa atin, hindi. And then he did not obey God completely by sparing the king of the Ammonites and then the best things in the land. How big a sin is that? Nagalit si God sa kanya kasi gumawa daw siya ng kasalanan. Now, do you know how God dealt with him? Did God, you know, uh, God did not immediately deal with him. Eh. Instead, God did something in 1 Samuel chapter 16. Tingnan nyo yung 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel 16, verse 14. 1 Samuel 16, verse 14. Sabi dyan, Now the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And an evil spirit from the Lord terrorized him. How long did the spirit terrorize him? The rest of his lifetime. Oh, Fourteen. Kaya ako sana ako ako inisip ko ako sana bin pinapatay na lang niya ako sa kaaway ko. Mm-hmm. Di ba tapos na bayad na? And hindi siya ginanon. In fact, yung yung punishment o yung consequence was a lifetime. The reason I am sharing this with you is because na-realize ko, merong tayong nagagawa na seems small and ang consequence, matagal. Mabuti pa sana na himpasin na lang tayo ni God. Tapos na. And many times, hindi ganun si God. He allows you to suffer. Yun ang yun, yun, nabadid ako. A sin of a moment, lifetime yung bayad. Di ba? And when I was thinking about this, I could not help but ask, was the Lord fair in His punishment? Diba parang lupit, no? Parang it's a bit harsh. Anyway, trying to understand this, trying to understand this, 
you are, you need you can only understand ano nangyayari sa atin how God deals with us by understanding his character can you go to Jeremiah chapter 9 Jeremiah chapter 9 I will read verse 23 and 24 Sabi ng verse 23 Thus says the Lord let not, let not a man boast of his wisdom and let not the mighty boast of his might let not a rich man boast of his riches but let him who boasts boast of this that he understands and knows me that I am the Lord who exercises loving kindness justice and righteousness on the earth for I delight in these things declares the Lord you know if you just read it sabi niya I will always be just and righteous so his ways will always be fair pero paano naging fair yung sin of the moment punishment a consequence of a lifetime <coughs> Kanina sabi ko sa inyo, di ba? When people get into trouble because of their sin, some would ask, Lord, ba't mo pinayagan? Lord, ba't hindi mo ko linayo? Sana pinigilan mo ko? Sana nagpadala ka ng tao na alam mo, para hindi ko nagawa? Bakit inalaw mo yung temptation? But anyway, to, to answer lang that, why God allowed temptation? The answer is, the question is, does God tempt us? Tagutin lang natin na let the Bible answer you. Go to James chapter 1. Santiago, no? James chapter 1. Verse 13. James 1. Verse 13. Sabi dyan, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am be- I'm being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil. And he himself does not tempt anyone. So the question is, if God, kung hindi galing ka kay God yung temptation, okay, bakit niya pinayagan? Ba, pwede naman niya pigilan yun, di ba? God has the power to always change our circumstances. So ang tanong, bakit hindi niya pinigilan? Why does He not even warn us or change the circumstances? Sana na lang, no? Lord, kung binago mo sana yung circumstances, hindi ko nagawa yon. Katulad na lang nung, katulad na lang nung nangyari sa 2 Samuel chapter 11. Tingnan natin yung sin ni, ni, ni David. 2 Samuel chapter 11. We will be reading hanggang uh, verse 2 hanggang verse 5. 2 Samuel 11. Verse 2. Now when evening came, David arose from his bed and walked around on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing. And the woman was very beautiful in appearance. So David sent and inquired about the woman. And one said, Is it not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? David sent messengers and took her. And when he came to him, he lay with her. And when he had purified himself, uh, herself from her uncleanness, uncleanness, she turned to her house. The woman conceived and she went and told David and said, I am pregnant. So si David sin, di ba? Ano pwede mong sabihin kay God nung nakagawa ka ng kasalanan? Ano pwede sabihin? Lord, pwede mo siya maligo sa loob ng bahay niya. Okay? Pwede mo pinayagan sa, sa labas pa talaga. Di ba? Pwede mo sa loob ng bahay, pwede sa labas. Okay? In this time, sabi ng Bible, it was the time for the king to go to war. Okay? Pero he decided not to go to war. He could also say, pagod na ako, Lord. Eh. Dami ko nang nagawa. And hindi ba pwede? Price ko neto. Di ba? One, nakita niya. Pwede niya sabihin, okay, inalaw ni God eh. Nung tinawag niya, pumunta rin. Pwede sabihin, pwede naman humindi eh. Di ba? So there could be men, but mat nagawa niya? Ang tanong ko, was it God trying to tempt him or make him sin? 
Pero ang tanong, why did God not protect His anointed? Why did God not change the circumstances? Pero do you know that this was not the first time that na-tempt si David to act on certain things that is good for him? Mm-hmm. Can you go to 1 Samuel chapter 24? 1 Samuel 24. Babasahin natin yung verse 3 hanggang 6. This was the time when Saul discovered so, so siya siya nagtatago. Mm-hmm. It was the first time na hinabol siya ni Saul. In verse 3, sabi niya, He came to the sheepfold on the way, where there was a cave, and Saul went in to relieve himself. Now David and his men were sitting in the inner recesses of the cave. The men of David said, Behold, this is the day of which the Lord said to you, Behold, I am about to give your enemy into your hand, and you shall do to him as it seemed good to to you. Then David arose and cut off the edge of Saul's robe secretly. And it came about afterwards that David's conscience bothered him because he had cut off the edge of Saul's robe. And he said to his men, Far be it from me because of the Lord that I should do these things to my Lord, the Lord's anointed, to stretch out my hand against him. Since he is the Lord's anointed. Di ba? In the same way na bakit si Batshiwan naligo sa bubong nila, pwede mo rin si Batshiwan pumasok dito. And minsan sabi mo, uy, grasya. Maraming bagay sa buhay natin, feeling natin, uy, grasya. Inalaw ni God. So minsan isip na, maybe this is God's will for me to do this. No, maybe it's God's will for God forget, Maybe it's God's will for Chabi to resign Soon Maybe But also maybe not Okay Pero yun ang notice ko si God God will not change your circumstances So para, minsan sabi mo Bakit hindi niya prevent? Bakit niya ako pinapayagan Dumaan doon Pero si David You notice Did not sin against Saul However he sinned against Bathsheba How is it? How is it that he did not sin against Saul? Ano nangyari? Merong conscience. Ha? Merong conscience. An okay? Mik wala wala ba siyang conscience dito? Well, daw wala siguro. One merong conscience. Ano pa? Ano pa? Why did he not sin against Saul? Because he had the faith. Yeah. Because he remembered the ways of the Lord. Mm-hmm. In this, dating na niya yung situation. Tining pinaniralan niya ano si Dabi ni God. And I notice to many people, we always look at the situation and justify. Okay, we explain God's word through our situation instead of explaining our situation through God's word the only thing that protected him was he remembered ano ang paraan ni God does God warn us kasi minsan feeling natin pinayagan ni God eh parang hindi niya tayo winarn eh does, does God warn us can you go to Deuteronomy chapter 30 Deuteronomy chapter 30 we'll read verses 19 and 20 Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 Sabi dyan, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death the blessing and the curse so choose life in order that you may live and you and your descendants by loving the Lord your God, by obeying His voice, by holding fast to Him, for this is your life and the length of your days, that you may live in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham and to Isaac, to Jacob, and to give them. Does God want us? Yes. He gave us His word. The, re- the, the reason I like the Bible, because the Bible is just that word, the Bible are also stories. 
And I like the stories because you can learn many things from them. Minsan mahirap intindihan ng words and commands. Hindi mo alam paano in-apply. Pero pag meron ng, pag meron ng story, mas naiintindihan mo. Sabi niya, tinuruan na kita, tayo naman, <coughs> binigyan pa niya tayo ng kwento. And yet, sabi niya, choose life. Why does God not warn us or prevent us from sinning? Why? Uh, pero bakit hindi niya tayo pinipigilan ba hanggang word lang? Oh, because of free will. Eh. It's something that he cannot take back. It's something that he cannot take back. But so on one side, feeling mo, ano mo tong free will na to curse eh. On the other hand, it could be a blessing. Bakit? Kasi pag namili ka ng tama, there will be great blessing. Kaso lang, pag namili ka ng mali, Meron also consequence. Nag-war na siya. Sinabihan niya na tayo. Unfortunately, minsan, pag nag-iisip tayo, pinipili natin yung mga kwento sa Bible that suits us. You have to understand that's not the only story there. Because there's also story of... Di ba? Like for example, today I get to talk, um, some company asked me to talk and then I tell them about the story of how to find opportunities in times of calamity. Na minsan, you pray, Lord, take us away from the calamity. Di ba? Tinanggal niya si... Tinanggal niya ang, Egy- ang Israel from Egypt. Linipad niya sa promised land. Si Isaac, no nagkaroon ng famine, sabi you stay. So, hindi lang dapat isang kwento pag intindihin natin. Kay, kay Isaac, yung baman siya when he stayed in the land of famine. Pero Isaac also acted on his situation. Sabi doon, he sold and stayed in his land. So, there are stories that will help us understand pa and God has already warned us. He did not only give us His Word, He also gave us examples, especially tayo na may Bible tayo. Doon sa Deuteronomy 30, sabi niya, verse 20, sabi niya, by loving the Lord your God. And ang problema niyang loving the Lord your God, it's not natural to us. What's natural to us? Loving ourselves. Oh, loving ourselves, di ba? It is more natural to love ourselves, we would rather do what we want and what is best for us. So, and then when we sin, what's a normal tendency? When you finally act on your passion, your emotion, when you sin, ano normal tendency? Oh, blame someone else. At the end of the day, blame God. Diba? At the end of the day, Lord, may pinayagan. Okay? Pero ang totoo nun, it is not natural for us. Loving the Lord is not natural for us. Now, so, therefore, how should we love the Lord? Can you go to, can you go to Matthew chapter 16? Matthew 16, verse 24. Matthew 16, verse 24, sabi dyan, Then Jesus said to His disciples, if anyone wishes to fa- to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. You know, to many people, itong deny yourself is about suffering. Di ba? Suffering, sacrificing to the Lord, uh, depriving yourself of good things. Hindi totoo yan. Hindi totoo depriving yourself of good things. Bakit? Sinabi si David, kung kulang yan, sana binagdagang ko ba eh. Di ba dami yan ang binigay kay David eh? Diba? Ulitin ko, sabi niya kay David, kung kulang pa yan, dinagdagang. Gusto mo maras maraming asawa? Pwede mo siya bigyan naman maraming asawa. Marami na siyang asawa nun eh. Kaso problema, kumuha siya ng hindi dapat sa kanya. Kasi gusto niya. Let me explain. To deny yourself doesn't mean serving the Lord or sacrificing the, to the Lord. Denying yourself means wag mong gawin yung gusto mo gawin mo yung gusto niya. Kasi maganda yun. When Bible said, if you come after me, you take up your cross, ang ibig sabihin lang ng cross, I told you already in a message before, the cross is not a, a, a symbol, of, it's not a symbol of suffering. It's a symbol of your mission in life. Jesus came to just die on the cross to pay the penalty of our life. Meron tayong lahat mission. Okay? I have my own cross. And that includes si Mila and the farm. Okay? That is my cross. Na minsan, ayoko na, 
Hindi mo magawa because that's your cross eh. Di ba? And that is what God wants you to do. So you deny yourself. All of us have our crosses. And part of your crosses, the employees, is your job. That's part of your cross. Sa pamilya, our children, our wives, our spouses, that's our cross. When I say cross, it does, it's not a symbol of suffering. It's a symbol of responsibility. Si Kuya will soon carry two crosses. Di ba? Maliliit lang sa simula. Okay? It's just a symbol of suffering. It's a symbol of responsibility. Okay? So sabi niya, deny yourself, take up your cross, and then you follow me. So when I realized that, na I realized ko, yung sabi ni Arnold na minsan masarap magpakatotoo. So sabi ko, was he faking it? Yun na kita ko bang tao fake yun? Plastic ba tayo when we deny what we want in exchange for what God wants? Are we being foolish? Ako na-realize ko we're being wise. Anong being wise? Kasi to follow our desire is not worth it. Napapahamak lang tayo. Nung nagpakabait siya, maski ayaw niya, he was wise. Okay? Kasi alam niya, sigurado may consequences. Sigurado. That will the consequence come from the Lord? Ako, I told you this before, di ba? I really believe the consequence doesn't come from the Lord. The Lord will just have to step, step back and let the world give you your consequence. Di ba? You have to step back. Okay? And to me, that's the worst thing that can happen to us. That God abandons us. I would rather na si God ang pumalo sa akin. Bakit? Kasi may mercy. The world is a cruel master. Walang mercy yan. Pag pinabayaan ka na ni God. So sa Similia, we have this principle, do what is right, not what is good. And I've been telling you today, our struggle is not between good and evil. It is between good and right. Will it be good for me? Diba? Pag pinatay ni David si Saul, will it be good for him? Yes. Okay, magiging king siya. Okay, but it, will it be right? Some people will do that. Kung isipin mo, hindi man tagakasalanan kasi I check the Bible eh. Saan sinabi ni God, do not kill your leader? Walang sinabi, the only time na may sinabi doon, I think Genesis 27, when si, when si God was rebuking, rebuking Abimelech because kinuha niya si Sarah. Okay, for his wife. So sabi, pumunta si God kay Abimelech in a dream. Sabi niya, do not touch my prophet. Okay? Because I will curse you. Yun lang. There was no command. And yet siguro naalala yun ni David, mas kimalit na kwento. Na sabi niya, do not touch the Lord's anointed. There was really no command against it. But ang alam lang niya, si God nag, naglagay dyan, si God din dapat magtatanggal. So as I end, uh, let me just ask, are you about to do something illogical in your job, towards your spouse, or your family, because it just feels good at that time? Ang gusto ko sabihin, don't do it. Because it is not worth it. Are you struggling with your circumstances and feeling mo that your situation justifies certain decision? Pero minsan may parang pwede, parang hindi. If you are uncertain, don't do it. Okay? Because it will not be worth it. Unfortunately, ang iba sa atin meron ng nagawang mali. Magkakamali na tayo. Ang tanong, paano natin itatama? Because the consequences will definitely come. Parang kay David. It came. Di ba? How do we now correct or improve our, our, our life even as we struggle to the consequences. Ang suggestion ko, do as David did. Anong do as David did? First of all, David showed humility to acknowledge that he has sinned. Ang pinagkaiba ni Saul and ni David, when Samuel confronted Saul, he justified. When Nathan confronted David, sabi niya, I have sinned against the Lord. I. When sinabi niyang I, he did not justify. Yeah. I think nagalit si God kay Saul because he justified. Sabi niya, para sa nga sa'yo to. He made a lot of justification. David did not. 
He did not justify kung ano ginawa niya. He made himself accountable. Si Saul blamed many people. Si David did not. Now, bakit importante na you make yourself accountable for your mistake and do not blame other people? Bakit importante yun? When you start to blame other people, ano normal tendency? Ano nangyayari when you blame people versus when you do not blame people? Anong, anong pinagkaiba nila? Let me explain to you anong pinagkaiba. When you blame other people, you want the world to change. When you only blame yourself, you now can change yourself. No question. Can you change the world? No, the world will not change for you. Paano, for example, justified? Parang tama ka, meron silang ginawang mali sa'yo. So you could just stay in the blame. What will happen? You'll never change your circumstances. Because these people cannot, sometimes these people do not know what to change. So stop blaming si David, stop blaming. In fact, nakakatawa si David, di ba? Nung mamamatay na yung anak niya kay Bathsheba, nag-fast siya, he prayed. Nung namatay, natuwa na siya. Tapos na. Okay? Because now he knows, ang kailangan niya asikasuhin, sarili niya. So whatever may happen today, whatever your struggle, as you make decision, make the most out of every decision. Make it worth your life. Do not think na pag meron tayong ginawang mali, bukas pag parasarasuhan tayo ni God, tapos na. Minsan it lingers. Okay, I, I hope I hope the mistakes of your past doesn't not disturb you up to now. Ako, I know some of my mistakes disturb me up to now. Okay? So let us be careful. When the situation seems good for you, think about what's right for the Lord. Because... When it is right for the Lord, ultimately it will be good for you.